Mrs H here. This is a walkthrough of the 2019 paper two. I have divided it into three manageable parts and this is part three of three. As I've said before, it's a difficult paper and it might seem a bit daunting, but please don't forget to look at the grade boundaries. Water conservation is important to the human body. So that means we don't wanna to lose too much water. Which gland releases the hormone that controls water loss from the body? Adrenal pancreas pituit pituitary. Which hormone helps the kidneys to control water loss from the body? And that is ADH. We don't have to look any further than that. A man is walking across a desert. The man has used up his supply of drinking water. Explain how the glands you named in question 6.1 and the kidneys reduce water loss. So we know we've got to talk about the pituitary gland. The man will have a low water concentration in his blood, which can be detected by the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus will send an electrical impulse to the pituitary gland. Now I've put that bit in brackets because on the AQA specification, you don't actually need to know that it is the hypothalamus that detects it, but I feel like it makes more sense if we put that in there. However, I've put it in the brackets and if you want to ignore it, you can. The pituitary gland will secrete more ADH, which will make the collecting duct. And if you're not happy with the word collecting duct, you can just put kidney tubule. Makes the kidney tubule more permeable. And that means more water can be reabsorbed. And by reabsorbed, we mean it goes back into the blood by osmosis. And this is an example of homeostasis by negative feedback. Now I've underlined that there because that isn't actually a mark on the mark scheme, but quite often there are marks going for that point. Some people have kidney failure and doctors may treat patient with kidney failure by either dialysis or a kidney transplant. Explain two biological reasons why most doctors think that a kidney transplant is a better method of treatment than dialysis. Do not refer to cost or convenience. And they've put that there because that's what we'd normally write, wouldn't we? We need to think about something else. Reason one is that you're not repeatedly puncturing the skin to set the dialysis machine up. And the reason two could be that urea is removed from the blood more effectively. So that's going to help to keep the concentration of urea in the blood to a minimal level. Question seven. Ragwort is a weed that grows on farmland. Ragwort is poisonous to horses. Plan an investigation to estimate the size of a population of ragwort growing in a rectangular field on a farm. This is like one of your required practicals right here. Place two tape measures approximately 20 meters by 20 meters, similar to an X and a Y axis in the field. Generate 10 pairs of random coordinates using a computer program. You could just Google computer program random generator. There are loads there. Each number needs to be between zero and 20. Place the quadrat on the ground at the first coordinate, e.g. if you've randomly chosen a pair of coordinates which are three and six, then you move along the tape measure three, you, your partner can move up six and then you can walk towards and meet each other and then pop the quadrat down at that coordinate there. Then you can count how many ragwort plants are in the quadrat. Record the results in a table and repeat this method until 10 quadrats have been placed in the area. The quadrat used is 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters. They do vary, but this is the one I'm choosing. If one quadrat is 0.5 meter by 0.5 meters, an area of 0.25 meters squared is what you're recording. If we're doing 10 quadrats, then the total area recorded will be 10 times 0.25 meters squared, which is a total of 2.5 meters squared. Then what we could do is calculate the mean number of ragwort per one meter squared 
To estimate the total number of ragwort plants in the entire field, we could use the formula below. So the total population will be the mean number of ragwort per meter squared times the area of the field. So you're going to have to measure the area of the field. You could do it with a trundle wheel, which would make it a bit faster. Because there's only four marks, I think you could see six mark questions on these. So these are worth practicing. The herbicide glyphosate will kill ragwort and other weeds. Scientists use bacteria for the genetic engineering of crop plants to make the crops resistant to glyphosate. Figure 8 shows the graph of a culture of the bacteria in a solution of nutrients at 25 degrees C. We're looking at the number of bacterial cells in millions per centimetre cubed over 25 hours. So why did the rate of reproduction increase between two and seven hours? Uh, as you can see, it's increasing all the time. But what's quite nice about between two and seven hours is that we've got quite this sharp increase. And this is what they want you to comment on. So it's the idea that the number of bacteria are increasing. The number of bacteria are increasing. So there will be more divisions per minute. After 12 hours, the rate of reproduction decreased. Suggests so three ways the scientists could maintain a high rate of reproduction in the bacterial culture. So what we're seeing with this decrease in rate is that when we get to the top end of this curve, limiting factors are having a play. So you need to think, well, what could we provide these bacteria with which would increase the rate of reproduction again? Well, we can always add more glucose, add more oxygen, and we could increase the temperature as well. We don't wanna increase it by too much because we don't wanna denature enzymes and kill off the bacteria. 7.4, the rate of reproduction of the bacteria is fastest at seven hours. How many times faster is the rate of reproduction at seven hours than the rate at 12 hours? Now we're gonna have to work pretty hard for these four marks, but if you love maths, this would probably be your favorite question on the whole paper. If we look on the graph and you find 12 hours where the curve is, you can see that it is actually curved. So to work out the rate, we're going to have to draw a tangent. This is really tricky for me to do on my tablet and I'm sure you'll do a better job on your piece of paper. And looking at my tangent, I think it needs to move up slightly more towards the top end. But the idea is that you put your ruler on where the 12 is and then you move your ruler so that you've got as even space either side of the 12, your tangent line and the curve as possible. And then extend your tangent line out. Uh, the longer, the better, really. So we need two points where this tangent line crosses exactly, just to make it simple for ourselves. So I can see uh, at 16 hours, my tangent line crosses through 100 millions of uh, bacterial cells per centimetre cubed. And at three hours, my tangent line is crossing very neatly through 55, 60, 60 millions bacteria blah 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 okay so my change in y is actually 40 divided by the change in x so the change in x is actually over 13 so that gives us a rate of 3.07692 millions of bacterial cells per centimeter cubed per hour at seven hours is different because you've got a straight line so you can't do a tangent on this and in fact, very tightly around seven is how we're gonna to have to work because that gradient does change slightly below and slightly above. So if we go to seven hours, that line crosses very neatly at 45. The line crosses very neatly at 35. So what we have is this change in Y is 10 and the change in X is actually one hour. So that gives us a rate of 10 bacterial cells in millions per centimeter cubed per hour. 
So then what we have to do is to work out how many times faster 10 is compared to 3.07692. So what we do is 10 divided by 3.07692 and that gives us an answer of 3.25 times faster. Now the mark scheme allows any final answer between 2.9 and 3.4 so I'm really happy that I got 3.25. Scientists transferred a gene for resistance to the herbicide glyphosate into the bacteria. The genetically modified GM bacteria can then transfer the glyphosate resistance gene to a crop plant. Explain the advantage of making crop plants resistant to glyphosate. Well, if you spray the crops with the glyphosate, it won't affect the crop and it will only kill the weeds as herbicide is a weed killer. This means there will be less competition for light water and mineral oils because weeds will be killed so they're not going to absorb and take those nutrients from the soil and the crop will grow better so there will be more yield. Question 8. It is important to keep the blood glucose concentration within narrow limits. A person eats a meal containing a lot of carbohydrate. This causes an increase in the person's blood glucose concentration. Explain how the hormones insulin and glucagon control the person's blood glucose concentration after a meal. The pancreas detects an increase in blood glucose and it secretes insulin. Insulin causes the cell membranes to become more permeable to glucose, allowing more glucose to enter the cells and therefore come out of the blood. Excess glucose not used in respiration can be converted to glycogen in the liver and the muscle cells, decreasing the concentration of glucose in the blood. If the concentration of glucose in the blood becomes low, then the pancreas will secrete a hormone called glucagon and that causes glycogen, stored glucose, to be converted back to glucose and therefore raising the blood sugar level again. Another example of homeostasis by negative feedback. The body cells of a person with type 2 diabetes do not respond to insulin. A person with type 2 diabetes often has higher blood insulin concentration than a non-diabetic person. Explain why. So if the body cells do not respond to insulin, then their cells will absorb less glucose. So if less glucose is going into the cells, it's building up in the blood. So the glucose concentration in the blood will remain high and that will trigger the pancreas to keep responding by secreting more insulin. Metformin is a drug used for treating people who have type 2 diabetes. Scientists investigated the effects of metformin and two other drugs A and B. The scientists wanted to see how the drugs affected the blood glucose concentrations of 220 people with type 2 diabetes. This is the method used. Put 220 people into five groups, treat each group with a different drug or combination of drugs for several weeks, Give each person a meal high in carbohydrate. Measure the blood glucose concentration of each person 30 minutes after the meal and again three hours after the meal. Suggest three variables that the scientists should have controlled in the investigation. There are a lot. So we'll just choose three. We can choose people of the same age, the same height and mass, so the BMI, the same type of meal, and then other things that you could have written were proportion of males to females, same severity of diabetes, same activity during the investigation, the dose of the drug, similar blood glucose concentration at the start and other health conditions or other drugs being taken need to be aware of and keep them the same in the groups. The scientists recorded their results as a mean value for each group. The scientists calculated the standard deviation for each group's results. So most of us have never heard of this at GCSE. It's something we do at A-level biology. They are going to tell you what it is and they want to see if you can figure it out. Yeah, it's application. Yes, it's higher level. So 
Let's give it a go. Standard deviation is a measure of the spread of the individual results above or below the mean value. The scientists gave each group's results as a mean plus or minus a standard deviation. The larger the standard deviation, the greater is the spread of results around the mean. Which of the results is the most precise? So precise means getting similar results every time you do it. So that would mean less of a spread around the mean, wouldn't it? So if you did the experiment and you got 30, 30, 30, 30, those are extremely precise results. But if you got 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, those are, it might give you a similar mean, but they are not very precise results. So that'd be a large standard deviation. Anyway, which of these results is the most precise? So we're looking for the smallest standard deviation, and that is the 15.4. Table three and figure nine show the scientist results. So we've got a table, a number of people. These are different drugs. So metformin A, B, metformin plus A, metformin plus B. And you've got 60 people with just metformin, 40 with just A, 25 B, 65 and 30. What? How strange is that? So we could probably comment on that later, no doubt. And then we've got this graph. Now those bars are showing the standard deviation. So if we look at metformin, I'll just go through this bar with you. So the mean percentage of reduction in blood glucose concentration three hours after the meal. 32% is the mean, but the variation around the mean means so some people's reduction was 38%, while some people in the group will have had a reduction of 26%. Now the bigger the bar, the bigger the standard deviation. So the bigger the bar, the less precise those results are. In table three and figure nine, some standard deviations of results overlap. An overlap of standard deviations shows the difference between the means is not significant. So even if you've got a difference, the difference isn't significant. No overlap of standard deviations shows a significant difference between the means. A student looked at the scientist's method and the results in table three and figure nine and the student stated metformin works better when used with other drugs. Evaluate the student's statement. When you see the word evaluate, you must write some pros and cons, good and bad. The graph shows that metformin plus A gives a significantly larger percentage reduction of blood glucose concentration compared to just A. And you can see that shown by the standard deviations not overlapping. So the statement is supported. Also, metformin plus B gives a significantly larger percentage reduction than B alone. So the statement is supported. Metformin plus A gives a significantly larger percentage reduction than metformin alone, shown by the standard deviations not overlapping. And therefore that supports the student's statement as well. Metformin plus B looks like it's better at reducing blood glucose than just metformin. However, because the standard deviation bars overlap, it shows that the difference is not significant enough. The data in the table show that different size groups were used for each drug and drug combinations and not many people were used in total. And other information like the concentrations of drug have not been specified, so the results may not be valid. And there, we have run out of space. We've definitely said enough for six marks. You might have added a few more different things in there. And that is it. Well done for getting through all three parts of this walkthrough. This last part was particularly hard. I want to wish you all the best for your exams. Good luck.